Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriveSuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about just-in-time, or JIT for short, in terms of a supply chain strategy. Now, uh, very quickly before we get started, very few companies can make this strategy work. A lot of companies try. Uh, they try and run it across a couple of their product lines. But by and large, it's very hard to make it work across your entire supply chain. It's very interesting for companies because it requires minimal capital expenditure, low inventory levels, low inventory counts, quick moving inventory, and it sounds like the best of, of all worlds. Match customer demand, take in only what you need, only what you're, what you're guaranteed to sell. However, in principle, it's very difficult to make it work. So we're going to review why it works for some companies and why it doesn't work for most. Okay? So when you think of JIT, the first thing you have to think of is an automotive manufacturer. Okay? Now, it actually, this entire strategy emerged um, from Asian automotive manufacturers after the Second World War. They just weren't able to basically have the inventory levels that their North American counterparts had. So they devised a system where they would only take in what they were guaranteed to sell. And, you know, it works, but it works for automotive manufacturers. And when you think of automotive manufacturers, the first thing you have to think of is they have a fixed bill of materials. Okay? They do not deviate from that fixed bill of materials. It is fixed for everything they manufacture. The second aspect is they have a small product line. Okay? They have a small product line, but they have huge volumes across those product lines. Okay? So, you know, they may have like five cars, but they, say, they sell millions upon millions of those cars. And they use their fixed bill of materials to their advantage through their volumes in terms of their, what they manufacture. Small product lines works with high volumes. It doesn't work when you've got a, a, a vast product offering with small volumes across that product offering. It's just not going to work in JIT. Okay? The third thing that, that is, is important to note is that they're able to ramp up production to volume forecasts. Okay? So in a sense, it's, it's, for these companies, it's more about increasing production throughput. But they're quickly able to ramp up their production volume. And that's because they operate in what would be considered a linear and constant demand. Okay? So they basically have linear and constant demand for products. Okay? And because they only manufacture five, they're able to basically ramp up that production fairly quickly. You know, five models a car, millions of those cars. So they operate in a linear and constant um, demand for their product line. Okay? The other thing that they, they rely upon is a vendor base that is in close proximity to their location. Okay? It's close, and these companies are their vendor's number one priority. Okay? So in essence, they are able to dictate terms of service because of the volumes that they bring to the table. Okay? They tell their vendors what to do and the vendors comply. So the vendors have to be close. You can't run JIT with product coming from, you know, China or overseas. It doesn't work, okay? They're close and they're the number one priority. The sixth thing, and the thing that's the most enticing for companies, is that they're able to match their payables to their receivables, okay? So, for instance, if you bought something from a vendor on June 5th, okay, and it arrived at your facility on June 8th, okay, you would have to pay your vendor by July 5th, assuming standard net 30-day terms, and you would then ship that product out the same day, and you would be paid by your customer by July 8th. Okay? So in this case, you know, you're, you're only really financing what amounts to three days of, of inventory, or even receivable, sorry. Okay? You place an order on June 5th, product comes to your warehouse on June 8th, you ship it out the same day, you pay an invoice to your vendor on, Ju on July 5th, and you get paid from your customer on July 8th. Sounds fantastic. Payables match to receivables. Okay? So in this case, JIT looks like the absolute best possible supply chain strategy you can run. The problem is very few companies manufacture from a fixed bill of materials. Okay? Very few companies are able to do this because they have a large product line and they don't have the economies of scale and clout to dictate terms to their vendor base. They're not able to ramp up production to volume and they don't have a linear and constant demand for their products. In fact, they operate in a cyclical or a seasonal uh, market in terms where, uh, you know, 
orders fluctuate from month to month or quarter to quarter. Okay? So these are all benefits, but if you look at the, the drawbacks of running JIT, the first one is delays. Okay? If you do not have these six points here or these five points, if you're not your vendor's number one priority, and if they are late and, and they cause a delay, it equals a stock out. Okay? And stock outs equal lost sales cost of inventory. Okay? Now, there are two costs to, 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 to manage inventory. There's a cost of holding inventory without sales, and there's a cost of losing sales because you don't have inventory. Delays equals stockouts. Stockouts equals lost sales. Lost sales could be measured by lost gross profit, lost customers. Okay? So bottom line, delays are killers in this. Okay? The other problem is management of shipments and per unit freight costs. Okay? Your per unit freight on incoming parts is an incredibly important aspect of your inventory costs. It's very hard to drive those per unit freight costs down when you're only taking in what you're guaranteed to sell. Okay? So it doesn't allow you to do that. And most companies have a hard time using their economies of scale to make JIT work because they don't have them to begin with. And they're not manufacturing from a fixed bill of materials. Look, JIT sounds fantastic. It is, the, it is, it is the, the, the most ideal situation in terms of managing inventory. But it really only works when these aspects or these five criteria are present. Okay? You have to look at your business model, your customer's order patterns, and your industry. JIT is very hard to run. If you can run it, great, give it a shot. But you've got to have fixed bill of materials. You, it's got to be a question of wrapping up production throughput. Okay? And be aware of these issues. Delays, you know, per unit freight costs, issues pertaining to economies of scale. If you're not your vendor's number one priority, and if they're not right around the corner from you, like maybe an hour away from you, you're going to have a very hard time making JIT work. And you have to have strong contractual agreements with your vendor base in order to dictate those terms of service. Okay? So JIT sounds great, and it should, you know, in, in the sense that it's able to match payables to receivables, low cost of capital, you know, quick inventory terms. But unless you have a linear and constant demand for those products, it's very hard to use that clout to your advantage. So that's it, just in time, JIT supply chains. Match inventory to your business model, your customer's order patterns, and your market. And just don't go with something you've read works somewhere else for some other company in another industry. Go with what works for your company. All right, so that's it, just in time. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.